Take this job and shove it. I ain't working here no more. Everybody's working for the weekend. Taking care of business every day. Now it's wow, 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 wow. Welcome to the world in a week. Working hard. Okay, and welcome to another edition of The Working Lunch. Good afternoon, your- everybody. Hey, Sean, how's it going? Doing well so far. So for those that are new to the show, I'm Jeff Turgeon. Uh, I'm the Executive Director over at the Central Mass Workforce Investment Board, and I'm joined by Sean McGauley, yeah. our also communications the, person. Also at the WIP. And so welcome to another episode of The Working Lunch. We call it the hard- hardest working... You don't introduce the super producer? Well, I was gonna, I was gonna get there. The it hardest. Didn't working. seem like you were gonna get there. <laughs> <laughs> the well, fair enough. So our, our super producer Bob Zakowski, uh, the, invis- from our the man behind the scenes, <laughs> with the golden voice. We ought to have you in front of the microphone. I think folks would rather hear your 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 dulcet tones instead of my my twang. We like your twang. <laughs> So well, welcome to another episode. We've got uh, we've got a, a lot of good stuff planned to talk about as usual. Lots happening in the world around workforce and, and job training, workforce development, employment related issues. Um, as the executive director of the Central Mass Workforce Investment Board, that's the board that looks at at really kind of bringing key stakeholders together around a common table to talk about workforce related issues uh, here in Central Massachusetts, Worcester and. Southern Worcester County, 38 communities uh, in total in Southern Worcester County, and how how do we go ahead? Uh, how do we go about making sure that our local economy has the has the workforce it needs to grow and to thrive? So really helping support businesses. Our board is made up of um, business members along with uh, representatives for, from uh, economic development, uh, other state agencies that work with with uh, with workforce related issues such as uh, seniors, uh, uh, mass rehab, uh, small business assistance. We also work with housing authorities uh, and and also included our education and training providers. So, and I know our first guest is going to be coming on in a minute, uh, uh, Vice President of Enrollment, Stephen Budd from Quinsigamon Community College. So we'll be bringing him on in, in a few minutes. How, how are you feeling today? Feeling good today. Feeling good today. It's uh you know, middle of the week, starting to feel good. It's also beautiful, beautiful uh, springtime. Yeah, it's nice outside. Springtime Everything's in blooming. Worcester. Everything's blooming and booming. So uh, feeling a little edgy, edgy today. I, I went over to uh, Eric's La Patisserie. Uh, over oh, the great other, coffee over there. Yeah, the 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 other location. He's 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 moved oh, all his operations the, over the tower. Up over to the tower building, fourth floor. What a beautiful location he has there, though. It's great, uh, great panoramic view of of downtown. Oh, nice. Yeah, Got I myself been up a, there yet. a great iced coffee from him. Uh, and and you know, so it's great to have that caffeine surging oh, through so my it's body. Oh, so caffeine kind of thing. Yeah. I thought you meant edgy, as in edgy. Yeah, that was. Uh, I had a little goatee going <laughs> last. That was when I was feeling a little edgy. Now I'm just. Now I'm just. Just edgy, edgy now caffeine, edgy. like yeah. edgy. edgy. Well, you don't have to say it like that. That that now I sense you're mocking. Not uh, at all. Not at all. Okay. Well, why don't we go ahead and bring? I know you're going to slide over and you're see. We're going to bring in yep. uh, Vice President for Enrollment at Quinsigamon Community College, Mr. Stephen Bud. Stephen, why don't you have a seat here? Hey, thanks. Sean, don't go too far. We might we might we might need you at some point. You never know. It's not break time, my friend. All right. So. Um, so thanks and welcome. Well, for, thank you. Thanks for, for having me. For coming out. Now, you're fairly new to, to campus? Uh, I am. Uh, I've been uh, at Quinsig all of uh, two months. Great. Actually, three months. Why don't you and, tell us a little bit about how you got to, uh, to campus? I know you've got some experience up in New Hampshire and other, and other schools. So why don't we talk a little bit about know. you first and how you made your way to, uh, to Quinsigamon Community College. Yeah, thanks, Jeff. Yeah, I was uh, in, uh, well, I've been in Massachusetts higher ed for uh, about 30 years and uh, took a little foray up in New Hampshire uh, for the last six years to be the president of a community college up there. Uh, Good experience, but uh, I was feeling like getting back to Massachusetts again. So uh, 
Uh, we had uh, some uh, departures from Quinn Sigamon and my good friend, uh, President Gail Carberry, uh, brought me in as an interim uh, for a while. Mm -hmm. So uh, happy to be here, happy to well, do the job. We're, we're certainly ha happy to, uh, to have you uh, here in the city. Um, I know you've got a lot going on on campus, as always. Uh, the school has just been uh, doing tremendous work and, um, and has had tremendous growth over the past several years, which has created, uh, obviously, a lot of great opportunities for people, but for, from a campus perspective, has made a lot of challenges uh, for you and for the, for the staff over there. So, and one of the big projects I know that Quinn Sigamon Community College is actually the lead on is a statewide $20 million Department of Labor grant uh, for transformation of yeah. kind of the community college network mm -hmm. and services in Massachusetts. The actual name of it is the Mass Massachusetts Community College Workforce Development Transformation Agenda Grant. Yes. Can you speak to us a little bit about some of the work that you're doing there? Yeah, I sure can. You know, uh, one of the things that we've recognized in uh, certainly the community college system, but in higher ed across the <coughs> board, is that... Uh, you know, when employers need people to fill jobs, they don't need them two years from now, and they don't need them four years from now. So one of the things we're working real hard on doing, Jeff, is, uh, you know, looking at ways that we can take uh, our two-year curricula uh, leading to associate degrees. Can we break them down into shorter-term certificates, yet giving students the opportunity to complete a certificate, maybe then enter the workforce for a while, but to come back and build on that certificate and kind of work their way in stages towards a degree. Sure. And I know that, that uh, we're also uh, the, the Workforce Investment Board in our career center, uh, Workforce Central, are also uh, strong partners with that effort here locally, and statewide the workforce system is strong partners with uh, with the other community colleges. I also know, I mean, it's a very ambitious yeah. grant. I mean, there's there's kind of three or four main things going on with it. You'd mentioned the accelerated, accelerated learning. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, there's also an effort around coordinating the, uh, the uh, processes uh, from each campus standpoint, making sure it's a little bit yes. easier for, for students to transfer from one community college to another, for business and for, for the public to understand the programs and how they, what equals what. So if you're taking a, an entry or, a, you know, a, a basic level course in economics at, at one campus, what does that class equate to at another campus? Mm -hmm. Kind of making the coordination between the, the campuses uh, work out. And you also yeah, mentioned absolutely. to, uh, you know, aligning it with workforce and, and looking at the programs that you're offering to see what, what trends are out there from the employment standpoint, what new programs might be, might be brought on. Mm -hmm. um, from, from, from that standpoint, there's some new programs I understand that Quincy Wing Community College is working to bring online for this accelerated type of, of training. Uh, do you want to mention some of those programs? Oh, sure. I'd like to those? talk about that. And, you know, the, the whole notion of working together across the 15 campuses is, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, an, ac an action that uh, the time has come. Sure. Uh, you know, we enjoy our independence as, as individual campuses, and we've preserved that in terms of having local uh, leadership because, you know, one of the hallmarks of community colleges is local, uh, well, local governance. The, and not tied to the communities yeah. they serve and not what's going on in Boston, per se. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, while uh, we do have employment needs that are common across uh, the Commonwealth, there are particular pockets of need that may mm -hmm. vary from east to west. And that gives the individual colleges an opportunity to focus on those kinds of programs that uh, are important to employers in their neck of the woods, yeah. but at the same time talking more around uh, better transferability of credits to other colleges <coughs> and uh, uh, some common curricula mm -hmm. uh, also help to bind us closer together, you know, in a coordinated effort to serve the needs of the citizens statewide. So. That's real important. And I know that come. you're moving towards, towards developing, uh, we had mentioned the accelerated yeah. programs, moving towards in the healthcare, several several of those offerings to, to put them onto a certificate path in a quicker quicker manner. Absolutely. For for those. And I know that's something that uh, we hear from job seekers a, a lot, too, if, if there's some retraining needed um, or helpful for them to, to get back into the labor market. Um, Again, they don't want to wait two years to complete a program and be, you know, a more viable candidate for employment. They want something that's going to help them as soon as possible. So having yeah. a, you know, a certificate and is this 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 element of, <coughs> excuse me, um, stackable credentials. So, yes. You know, along the way, you can 
you can uh, kind of mix and match the different certificates, and then they add up to a larger, you know, kind of career path or credentials. So uh, a lot going on in healthcare, and there's some other stuff going on oh, too, Oh, right? a lot of stuff going on in healthcare. Yeah, we're uh, <coughs> a, a number of uh, existing certificate programs that have been a year in length, maybe more, being uh, packaged in accelerated formats. Um, what that means, uh, outside of higher ed jargon, is that uh, they can be delivered, uh, you know, not the traditional three days a week, maybe five days a week, maybe offered over three months uh, rather than a typical uh, four-month or 15-week uh, semester. And I think along with that, Jeff, it's important for us to, to think about, you know, alternative start dates and end dates. You know, we've always operated on a two-semester model with a, with a summer program, and that's been very robust. But... Uh, you know, we uh, also realize that we've got to start some programs mid-semester. Uh, so there'll be opportunities to come to the college and uh, take advantage of some of these programs, you know, throughout the year and, uh, you know, get credentialed fairly quickly, uh, get into the workforce. Uh, <coughs> many of them are in healthcare related areas. Uh, yeah. EKG technician and phlebotomy uh, will be one of uh, yeah. the accelerated certificates. Also, uh, pharmacy tech uh, is also another well, real popular it's one. Cer and it certainly you know, makes sense for us to work closer together from a workforce system side in a public, you know, on the public side and on the public side, the education side too. And, yeah. and the community colleges p play a tremendous role in preparing you know, people for careers or next steps and, 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 and the like. The other big news, uh, of course, is your work to uh, to open up a new downtown campus location. Very excited about that. Very, very excited about that. It's uh, really time to be downtown. And, you know, the focus there is to, well, there'll be kind of a soft opening, if you will, okay. uh, by, uh, by January of next year, December. So but, rolling uh, in some programs, so but not necessarily the full right. offerings that you eventually will have. That's there. right. But that really will be the locus of many of these healthcare care uh, departments. Uh, they'll move wholesale from the campus up on Boylston Street, you know, downtown and be part of the downtown community. You know, mm -hmm. all those students do uh, clinical placements and other kinds of uh, hands-on experiences with employers yeah. uh, around now, the region. Our, and, our workforce office yeah. is downtown already, and um, it's great to see a lot of times – coming to work or, or going out uh, for lunch or whatever, we'll see a lot of young people around downtown. There's more yeah. student housing um, that's there now and more to come. Uh, of course, the uh, the downtown campus for the uh, Mass College of Pharmacy. Mm -hmm. You know, so you see a lot of a lot of vibrant energy downtown with those students and and what they what they're bringing to the culture of downtown. Yeah. And, and of course, you've got businesses that are now springing up to cater to them and yes. to, to help serve them. So, you know, having that downtown, it really does change the feel. So having more students and more more uh, people coming in for that, you know, should be another great addition to the downtown area. So. Well, we hope so. You know, uh, that, you know, we can certainly feel the vibrancy downtown. And, I, and I know you're, you're and working with uh, the folks over at the Worcester Business Development uh, Corporation for... Uh, to help build that out and yes. to develop that space, yes. and it sounds like you, you know, sounds like it's a wonderful partnership to really renovate that that building from from what it was to you know where it's going to be. And I know there's talk about putting in um, an innovation center and yes, and, and helping yes. you know move people move uh, from ideas and concepts and research into you know new jobs and new companies and springing off uh, those new companies. So. So lots of good stuff happening. Yeah, you know, we want to be part of what's happening. Uh, you know, we know that, like you said, that downtown is uh, vibrant. Uh, I've only been in uh, the Worcester community three months now, and uh, I can yeah. tell you it's a hopping place. Well, I also know that um, uh, the, the college has done great work to make partnerships outside of Worcester as well. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. You know, whether it's down in the Boxwood Valley area and reaching out to some folks down there, um, out in the in the southern Worcester County area, um, we're actually uh, the the Southbridge Workforce Central uh, location there is actually co-located in the same building as Quinn Sigamy Community College's satellite location in Southbridge. So it's a yeah. it's a neat synergy that can develop, uh, you know, and it furthers our um, you know kind of joint programming that we that we work together on. So yeah, you know, the philosophy of uh, our president Gail Carberry has been to bring the community college to the people. Mm. And, of course, that resulted in the significant uh, uh, center that we have in Southbridge right now. Yep. But there are conversations going on in the Marlboro area. There are conversations going on in the Blackstone Valley. 
you know, thinking first of working with uh, school principals and superintendents and seeing existing what we can facilities do. Yes, better, existing facilities. Yes, existing facilities, see what we sense. can bring there and uh, let it grow from there. You know, and I also, um, you know, we're always looking too to, to help uh, spur uh, further training, further uh, education opportunities in our region and, you know, to have those facilities used after hours, those high school facilities, especially the, you know, some of the beautiful uh, vocational technical high schools that we have, not only here in Worcester, but also you know, Bay, whether you're talking about Bay Path, which yeah, is undergoing sure. yeah. um, a major renovation uh, there. Dr. Zukowski, you're you're familiar with that project. What's the what's the? It's like a multi-million dollar, uh, seventy-three point eight million dollar renovation addition. Mm-hmm. The addition will include eight new science labs in all classrooms, yeah. and the renovation is the rest of the facility. So they like Worcester do uh, programming not only during the day with with traditional high school students, but also after hours with with adults. And and so after that renovation comes, we're always looking to to help spur you know further options for for uh, you know adult uh, adult students. You know what we'd like to see happen too is not only bring in adult students who might study at those different sites, but also you know talk to uh, the faculty and administrators mm-hmm. about how we might offer courses for high school students currently enrolled in high school to pursue community college courses and get a jump on the degree exactly uh, that, so which which is which is something that 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 uh, dual enrollment or co-enrollment exactly really saves yeah. saves them and gets them a jump start on college education uh to get them going in in the right direction or, or at least really thinking about that next step to have a, a few college credits you know, in yeah. your in your back pocket, so to speak, yeah. when you graduate high school, boy, I, I would have loved that that opportunity would have saved, you know, obviously save save some money, some time, uh, and really get you get you kind of prepared mentally. I think for that for that next leap, right? Yes, absolutely. Uh, whether your intention is to go to the community college in the first place or transfer to, uh, you know, a college of your choice, uh, it's a it's a jump start. So we're talking with Stephen Budd, the uh, Vice President of Enrollment at Quinn Sigamond mm-hmm. Community College. In many ways, what we consider the flagship community college in the in the Commonwealth. Oh, I think so. Yeah, I'm not sure we can yeah, officially yeah. use that title, but we'll we'll, we'll go with well, it. Well, here in Worcester, we will. Sir. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So, is there anything else? I don't want to uh, before we, we we do have a little thing we're going to wrap up with yep. before segment we're going to wrap up with with you. But before that, is there anything else that that you wanted to mention today? Anything else that that we may have missed in covering that's that's happening on campus? Well, let me the say graduation th- coming up, I, I imagine. Too. Uh, yes. And I want to speak to that for a second. Okay. Uh, you know, take this opportunity to tell uh, the listeners that we have changed our graduation day and location. Really? OK. Uh, and that is just breaking news. We did this yesterday, folks. Um, with the uh, uh, impending weather for tomorrow <coughs> and Thursday, we were going to graduate on campus at 4 o'clock on uh, Thursday afternoon. And the weather and does not seem friendly for the that? The weather does not seem friendly. We're in a tent with metal poles, and the prospect of thunder and lightning really caused us to think through that yesterday. Yeah, uh, that yesterday. Might not be yeah. The best, yeah. No. So, what we're going to do, we're going to be at the DCU Center on Friday at 4 o'clock. Oh, interesting. Okay. Yeah. So we're getting the word out as much as we can. I'm sure there's uh, a lot of folks on campus really working hard to make that change. That's a big event. Absolutely. It'd be like changing, uh, you know, a massive wedding uh, two days or three days beforehand. That feels like like it'd be just just an amazing. (laughs) So I I appreciate you taking the time to be here. Thank you. uh, uh, Helping out with that. So uh, so that's an amazing thing. And of course, um, you know, speaking of storms and everything, that campus. Uh, you know, uh, in the news, you know, today and uh, over the last uh, few days here with uh, with the tremendous damage and and uh, the storm that had gone through the. Tw-